Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today I have a special video for you all. And it is going to be on the history of Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. I've been doing a lot of research over the past few days. I'm gonna be sharing some fun photos with you. And I also have my 15 inch Knickerbocker Raggedy Ann joining us. She is just so beautiful. So let's go ahead and get started. And here we go. The original Raggedy Ann doll was designed by political cartoonist and illustrator Johnny Gruel and patented in September of 1915. So I'll go ahead and show you guys some photos along the way. The legend behind the beloved rag doll is that Marcella, Gruel's daughter and eldest child, found a faceless cough doll in her grandmother's attic. Johnny allegedly drew a face on it and thus Raggedy Ann was born. Her name was derived from two poems written by James Whitcomb Riley, Raggedy Man and Little Orphaned Annie. In other rumors, it is said that Gruel himself found the cloth doll in his attic around 1900 or even as late as 1914. Some say that Gruel had quite the sense of humor and may have even pieced together these origins of the first Raggedy Ann himself. Sadly, Grell's daughter passed away in 1916 at the young age of 13 due to a contaminated smallpox needle. While she was ill, she supposedly often played with the once faceless, forgotten rag doll to lift her spirits. Her time playing in the nursery may have been the inspiration of Grell's stories about Anne's adventures with Marcella. Initially, Gruel wrote the book called Raggedy Ann Stories and the distributor, P.F. Voland, asked for dolls to help sell the books. Using a prototype, Gruel recruited family members to help only a few dozen to help make only a few dozen of the dolls and the first book was published in about 1917 or 1918. I will go ahead and show you a patent of that doll. The story goes his youngest son, Worth, even had the most important task to buy heart-shaped candies imprinted with the words, I love you, to place inside the dolls. And some say children would suck on the candy, causing the dolls to become sticky and dirty, so the candy heart was later replaced with a cardboard one. By 1918, P.F. Volan, with license and permission, took over manufacturing the 15 and 16 inch Raggedy Ann dolls. Today, Volans are considered rare and sought after and are usually worth $1,000 or more. They were much different than the newer dolls. For instance, Volan dolls were white, had uneven brows, their feet turned inward, had five lashes instead of four, and brown hair. Let me go ahead and show you guys a Volan doll. In 1920, Anne's younger brother, the Raggedy Andy doll, was released. And in 1934, P.F. Voland went out of business. For less than a year, Exposition Toy and Doll Company manufactured the dolls, but they couldn't compete with the, dolly, the Molly Doll Outfitters. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a photo of the only Expedition Toy and Doll Company that I could find, and then you'll see the Molly Dolls. Before we go any further in this video, I wanted to acknowledge some of the research that I found. I wanted to acknowledge the collectors and I wanted to give credit for their photos. So some of the photos that I've, I have found have come from author and Raggedy Ann collector Susan Ann Garrison. And I'll be going ahead and sharing everyone who has their photos or their doll part of their collection. I will be giving credit to them because I only own a few and I will I will let you know when those dolls come up. So Molly Goldman, or owner of the Molly Doll Outfitters, didn't have the license to produce these raggedies. She even filed a patent for Ann and Andy without acknowledging or receiving permission from the Gruel family. Molly was confronted with a lawsuit and refused to stop producing the dolls for another year. It took three years and legal assistance to get her to stop. The Supreme Court ruled in Gruel, Gruel's wife's favor in 1938 
and Molly Golden was forced to stop producing or attempting to get the patent for the Raggedies. Sadly, that took about three years to, to be done. Let me show you a Molly doll. On January 9, 1938, Johnny Gruel died of heart failure. He was 57 years old, and it was at that point that his wife Myrtle secured the rights to his works and helped, protected his late, and helped protect his legacy. The Gruel family entered an agreement in 1938 for Georgie Novelties to manufacture the 18 to 36 inch Raggedy Ann and Andy for the next 25 years. Georgine Raggedies were much different from the Bolins. Their yarn hair was thicker, lighter in color, and Raggedy Ann was given her iconic top knot to differentiate her from Andy. Their mouths were more red and defined, their noses were outlined in black, along with their eyes being attached to the back of the head. The cardboard hearts were replaced with a hand-painted red heart on their chest with the words, I love you. Twelve and fifteen inch Awaken Asleep dolls were released and on a rare occasion you might find a 50 inch doll. These were originally used as display centerpiece toys in department stores. Sometimes Georgine dolls were made with various dress patterns or checker print socks due to the shortage of fabric through wartime. The cotton stuffing inside the doll sometimes even had seeds still in it. Throughout the years, children everywhere had family members that would make handmade raggedies, and with the help of a collector's book, you can easily tell a manufactured doll from a handmade one. I'll go ahead and insert some handmade dolls. I love some of them. They're just so beautiful and something so special about them from a loved one, and I think they're just as special as your, your, fa your factory Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy's. In 1962, the Knickerbocker Toy Company made Myrtle Gruel an offer she couldn't refuse. She didn't renew the contract with Georgine Novelties, but opted to manufacture through Knickerbocker instead. The once orange-haired Raggedy Ann's now sported red hair. Andy's hair remained more orange. The lashes, mouth, and nose were slightly altered. There were now even more size options, plus other merchandise like lamps and sleeping bags were added. The hand-painted hearts were changed to stamp ones. The skin color had more of a peach hue. And my personal favorite of all the raggedies are the Knickerbocker dolls. My own experience with a beautiful 36 inch pair was quite memorable. My grandfather and I would often visit his friends, another elderly couple. I would have tea and cookies with his wife's friend and one day she introduced me to her Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. I fell in love with those smiling faces. As a child, that had a difficult time at home. Something about their expressions put me at ease and I was so thankful for my grandfather's friend's wife for trusting me to play with her treasures. For every visit, I would ask to play with them and she would always say yes. I never did get a pair of my own back then but had plenty of handmade dolls with yarn hair or cloth bodies and that is my one regret regarding my time as a collector. I wish I'd asked for a Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy sooner. So let's get back to those knickerbockers. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Well, this is a knickerbocker. This is my 15 inch Raggedy Ann. I don't have a Raggedy Andy for her currently, but I'm hoping to fix that problem really soon. Under Knickerbocker, a few new characters were added to the lineup. The endearing camel with the wrinkled knees. Rumor is he was based on a plush camel given to Gruel's daughter from his worldly travels. The toy allegedly lost the wire in his legs after some playtime and then had wrinkly knees. In the early books, the camel was tan or white and then was released as light blue. So let's go ahead and check that camel out. The reason 
he was blue is because he showed up better on the animated musical cartoon Raggedy Ann and Andy, a musical adventure that debuted in 1977. Some collectors might even get lucky enough to find a 78 inch pair of dolls that were used in department store displays and even on parade floats. Knickerbocker produced Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy until around 1982. They were then manufactured by a subsidiary company of Warner Communications called Applause. Applause was usually a gift line marketed through Hallmark. The embroidered face dolls came in four sizes. Raggedies were produced with Applause until 1983. They are definitely different in their appearance, having brighter red hair, including Andy. Again, they were created in various sizes, including a dancing doll that came with a loop on the feet that can attach to a child around 36 inches or so. Applaud merged with Wallace Berry in the early 80s and from 1983 until today, it is licensed through Hasbro Incorporated. So let me go ahead and show you an Applause doll and some Hasbro dolls. The license for Raggedy Ann and Andy was owned by Gruel's son, Worth. Knickerbocker was purchased by Hasbro in 1983 and Macmillan Publishing also bought the rights to produce musical dolls and hand puppets. Numerous reproductions have been on the market over the years. Hasbro has given permission to Dakin, which released reproduction door jeans. Simon & Schuster produced 80th and 75th anniversary edition dolls and Play School, a division of Hasbro, offered grooming dolls which were aimed at preschool aged children. I have some Simon & Schuster dolls in my collection and some Georgine reproductions. So I'll go ahead and show you that. If you're new to the channel, you wouldn't know. So I'll show you. Through the years, Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy have been a source of joy for children around the world. Raggedies have been attainable by almost anyone from any walk of life. In 1966, Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy helped celebrate the Monaco's 100th anniversary. They were considered classic American folk doll at the Montreal Expo. And according to an article in Time Magazine around 1969, Raggedies were taken along with candy and gum to the hospital in the bombed out village Vaux Dat in Vietnam. Even the teenage boys who were soldiers and experts with rifles and black marketeering hugged the cheerful dolls unashamedly. Bob Hope, alleg Bob Hope allegedly took raggedies to the GIs overseas when he went on tour. Caroline Kennedy, daughter of President Kennedy, has been in photos with her raggedy Ann, and former President Truman's daughter Margaret allegedly insisted that her raggedy Ann wear a new dress so she could be acceptable to meet Washington society when her father was elected to the Senate in 1934. I will go ahead and show you guys some beautiful pictures of those raggedies. Their positive message regarding kindness and friendship is a theme that never grows old in a language that is universal. With proper care, an antique raggedy can last a lifetime. Some gifted collectors are even able to restore the dolls by cleaning them and sewing new garments for them. Here are a few important tidbits. If you want to take care of your vintage raggedies, keep them out of the natural direct sunlight for prolonged periods of time. Don't leave them outside in wet conditions or in damp places and don't smoke around them. These are things that can ruin a raggedy doll due to their materials. One thing is for certain, Ann and Andy are the two companions that have never gone out of style or stopped being loved. A rag doll is fairly easy to care for and doesn't generally require much maintenance. No matter how many times raggedies are dropped, played with, or even mistreated, they are always smiling. For me, that's a constant source of joy to see a happy face through decades of loss, war, sadness, and more. It reminds me to never give up and to always stay hopeful of the future with a, oh, with a smile on my own face. I will be showing you some advertisement pictures. So thank you for watching this video. I'm gonna show you some advertisement pictures, some pictures, some historical pictures of Raggedy Ann. I want to personally thank Susan Ann Garrison, the collector and author that I found a lot of information at. I was also able to find information on uh, Wikipedia. Some of the photos that you've seen belong are personal um, 
dolls from collectors such as Gwen Daniels, let's see, Patricia Snyder, Kathy George, let's see who else, and Candy Brainerd. And some of those are also from the private collection of Ragdoll Dreams. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the history of Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy. Bye.